how to build a powerful team. Business is a team sports. As your business grows, you'll notice you cannot just do everything yourself. You need to start having build a team of people around you. And the problem with a lot of entrepreneurs, they are control freaks. They are, uh, they have what I call the 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 they are rugged individualist. That they want to control everything and they're afraid to let go. So how do you build a powerful team around you? Now this is a topic I could spend probably. A hundred videos talking about leadership and management and, and human psychology, but the basis of this is when you want to build a powerful team, the very first thing you need to have is a vision. Is a vision, a very clear vision of what you want the business to look like, because your vision is your greatest asset when it comes to leadership. You cannot inspire anybody without a vision. You think about. Uh, in history, when someone wants to conquer a country, when someone uh, like a movement or anything like that, it's always a, a vision, a very clear vision of, hey, this is what we're gonna do. That's what it's gonna look like when we, when we win, when we, when we produce this outcome. So, having that clear vision is extremely critical, and that vision, you need to constantly, almost every damn fucking day. As a leader, to sell your team on the vision, you then get them excited because people go through ups and downs. You cannot just tell them the vision once. No, you keep selling it and selling it. And sometimes, as a leader, you are not even sure deep down. Well, can we actually do that? I'm not so sure. You better not fucking show it. You better, you better not share any doubts. It's that unstoppable, unshakable confidence. We're gonna do it. We're gonna make it happen. Let's do it as together as a team. That vision. It's extremely powerful. Once you have the vision, okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna dominate whatever industry. Where we're gonna change certain sector, right? We're gonna we're gonna help、uh, whatever、uh, group of people, whatever that is. Second thing you need is a mission. So once you have vision, the big picture, then is your mission. And your mission cannot be, oh, I want to build this business so I can get rich. I can tell you that does not inspire anybody. You gotta have a mission that inspires people beyond than just you know your own self gain. Because if you just focus on that, imagine you're sitting with an employee and he talks about you know why you want to do this, why you want to build this company, why, whatever you want to do, and you just say I want to make a lot of money, or I want to buy a new car. That does not inspire anybody to to perform well、uh, because. People want to belong to something bigger than themselves. They want to belong to some a mission that's bigger than themselves. They want to know what they do matters. They want to know that they're making a difference. Of course, there could be a lot. They could you can make a lot of profit. There could be money involved. No problem. We're not talking non-profit, but the mission has to be beyond than just yourself. It cannot be a selfish reason. So once you have that mission or that mission statement, vision, mission. The third thing that you need is your culture. And what made up your culture is your values. What are your values as a company, as as a leader? What do you stand for? And usually there are four or five things that you stand for. Then everything builds around that. Everything builds around that, and that's what forms your culture. See, when you have this versus that's why a lot of times lifestyle entrepreneur have a challenge, have a problem building a team because lifestyle entrepreneur, well, I just want to make enough money so I can work from home. I can make. I just want to make enough money so I can, I can work so many hours、uh, a week.、Uh, it's all about me, 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 me. When you have that kind of mentality, it's very difficult to attract talents because you're thinking too small. People want to get involved with something that you know what we're gonna do this, right? When Bill Gates said, "We you know what we're gonna put a, put a personal computer in every household in North America," that's a big thing, right? When Steve Jobs' mission, all these things, it's a big thing. Elon Musk. Right, we're gonna we're gonna travel through space. That's a big thing, right? This is something that people get inspired and say, "Wow, that's gonna take me five, ten, twenty years to make it happen." But they love that because now there's a purpose. It's a more a purpose-driven organization. So, vision, mission, 
your culture. Those are the foundation of what it takes to build a great team. Once you have that, now when you are interviewing somebody, very simple. You ask them, "Well, this is what we stand for. This is our vision. This is where we're going. This is our this is our mission, and this is our culture." Does that fit? Like when I sit down with someone who potentially worked for me, I said, "If you just work, look into like a nine to five kind of thing, where you 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 know you're just." Doing the work and you get home and you don't think about it,、um, you just want to kind of have a paycheck. I, this is my company; it's not the company for you. There are plenty of other companies because anyone who works with me, with me, they know that it's very, it's very intense. It's long hours. It's hard work. It's very high standard. That we we don't tolerate excuse. We don't tolerate uh, uh, a, a, you know bad performance. We just don't.、Uh, and people. Like that, they just don't last in the company. So we're very upfront with that, and we let them know what they're getting themselves into. On the other hand, if they could, they're willing to accept that, and that's what they want. They thrive under pressure, and only certain types of people thrive under pressure. That that they have high standard themselves. Then I would say, I want to get to know them. This is really my kind of my management secret. I want to get to know their personal goals. It's no good when I just just say, okay, what's the salary? How many hours I work? I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to hear that shit. I want to hear what's your personal goal, what's your dream. Every single person I work with, I want to know what 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 motivates them. Yeah, you know, I want to, I want to buy a car. What car? Why you want to buy a car? Right, just like today we pick up the car for for Desmond. The Desmond and I, we've been talking about he want he wanted to buy a new car for almost two years. Actually, many years. We've been talking two years, but he's been wanting to do this, buy a car for his dad for like years. That's his dream, and I know that's his dream. And today we we made his dream come true. When you can do that for your team, when you can do that for your people, that's how you get loyalty. Because you make their dreams come true. You tie your personal goals, you tie you tie their personal goals with your company goals. Now you're aligned. Versus a lot of companies, which I don't agree with. They are trying to squeeze the people. They're trying to I pay you the minimum so you don't quit. I try to pay you the minimum so you still work, but I treat you like shit.、Uh, that's you know that doesn't inspire anybody. Versus you know what are your personal goals? How can I make your personal goals come true with the the way that we structure the company with our compensation, right? If your goal you know what if your goal is to be a millionaire, well then maybe this position we cannot do that. If you want to make that kind of income, I need you to add this much value and be in this division. Maybe you can get to that income goal that you want, right? Maybe it's 100k, maybe 200k, half a million, whatever that is. And I always tell my my team is, I, I'm not the one that dictates how much you get paid. It's much more how much value you add to the company. You want to make this much? You want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year? Very simple. I said, find a way to add value, 10x. Find a way to add a million dollars worth of value to the company. You'll make 100k. It's very very simple. It's not up to me. It's up to you. So then people would think about, okay, how can I add more value? Then the culture becomes not versus this is my my this is my area. This is my department. That department I don't talk to them. That's none of my business. I don't have that in within what I do within my company. Everybody helps each other.、Uh, it's very supportive. We learn.、Uh, we argue. Sometimes we fight. But you know what? After that. Next day, no problem. We get back to work. We just focus. So that's the culture of I, what I created, because that's who I am. That's what I'm about. We don't take it personally. We are growth oriented. We we are we focus on excellence, right? And that's you are who you attract. So look within yourself. If you attract bad people, if they're not loyal, if they don't perform well, if they they are they don't have high standards, look within yourself. How do you perform? How do you work? What is your standard? It's very much leadership. Always starts from top to bottom. Always top to bottom. So that's a very basic overview of how you build a powerful team. Obviously, there are many many techniques or interview techniques. We go go into the tactics. But today, I just want to give you kind of a glimpse of the mindset, the mindset of what it takes. To build a powerful team, and that's why there are so few good leaders out there. Very, very few good leaders. When you are a good leader, you attract amazing talents.
talented people they want to follow a good leader and there's so few of them out there so if you are a good leader you see people can see that they recognize that people would fight people would fight to work with you i have my team members they move country they immigrate to be on my team you just think about the commitment of that they move from their country to where i live to work with me because they know what we have if you can be a leader that's that inspirational that's that compelling you will have never you will have no problems attracting talents at all because you always have talents lined up want to work with you and join your organization does that make sense so there you go make sure you hit the subscribe button turn on notification subscribe to the channel every single day we upload a new video for you if you have other questions you want to ask me about management and, and communication or leadership how to manage your team or how to motivate your team comment below be but be very specific so I can give you a very specific answer. Today I'm just giving you an overview, but do that. Comment below, and you can also check out all the other videos on this side as well, on this side as well. Until next time, I'll see you in my family.